Listen to this. Sorry. Alien Beings, Human Feelings on BBC Two in a moment. An identity crisis for Harry on the third rock from the sun. Big questions for Gary and Dorothy on BBC One in half an hour. Getting gooey in men behaving badly. The nine o'clock news now on BBC One with Michael Burke. Parliament's inquiry into sleaze has left questions hanging over ten Tory MPs. It made the last Commons question time before the election the bitterest for years. Inflation's down and edging closer to the government's target. And why the most powerful man in the world went to the summit in a food container. Good evening. The last Commons question time ended in a bitter row between the main party leaders after John Major refused to extend Parliament to increase the chances of the full report into so-called sleaze being published before the election. An interim summary was made public, which cleared 15 MPs of breaching Commons regulations, but left allegations against 10 more unresolved. Our political editor Robin Oakley reports. The Labour leader has traded in double standards from the moment he took up office. He might as well have brought his soapbox into the chamber with him. At his final question time, a street-fighting Prime Minister, cheered on by his backbenchers in a baying tribal commons, got highly personal with Tony Blair. Who flew Concord and failed to declare it. And who flies to the other side of the world to do newspaper deals and never admits to them. If there's any double standards, they sit there on the opposition benches. Mr Blair had riled the Prime Minister by pressing home Labour charges that the government was covering up the latest sleaze report. Mr Major had said he wanted it published, but by ending the parliamentary session before he needed to, he was ensuring it wouldn't reach the Standards and Privileges Committee. If he fails to have this report published, when everyone knows that he could, it will leave a stain on the character of his government that will only be erased by a new government with a fresh mandate that will restore confidence in our public life for good. Mr Major called that smear tactics a political stunt and made clear he won't seek to extend Parliament's sitting. Efforts by the Liberal Democrat leader to continue the campaign which his party had begun got an equally scornful response. He enters the election as he conducted his administration on a broken promise, on a slippery evasion and with his party mired in accusations of sleep. The right honourable gentleman ends as pious and pompous as he's been throughout this parliament. The row centres on an inquiry by Standards Commissioner Sir Gordon Downey into allegations that MPs had taken payment for asking parliamentary questions for business interests. He reports to the Standards Committee, which appeared to suggest in an interim report today that it would have liked more time to try to finish the inquiry. The committee, the report says, regrets that it's not been possible to complete all its outstanding work before the prorogation of Parliament. But would there have been enough time to complete it before the election? Sir Gordon Downey was due to give his conclusive findings to the committee next week. But lengthy evidence from the MPs accused would still have to be heard. And Sir Gordon today warned against shortcuts. It would have been, he said, against the interests of natural justice to have arbitrarily curtailed the inquiry to meet an election timetable. What worries many is that the interim report clears 15 MPs of breaking the rules, but has nothing to say about 10 others, one way or the other, though Sir Gordon says nothing should be read into that. I expressed very grave reservations and said it was my view that we were uh, going to clear some and leave the others to hang. And it, it appears that's the way it's turning out now, but so that no one is satisfied, now, other than that handful of members who've been cleared, of course. The row over whether the government has suppressed the report by its election timing will probably never be settled, though even some Labour MPs blame cock-up rather than conspiracy. But if opposition parties have gained by being able to push sleaze to the top of the election agenda, 
Parliament as a whole has suffered. What should have been a showpiece of self-regulation has ended in a messy flop. Robin Oakley, BBC News, Westminster. Thousands of disabled people in England and Wales may lose many of their home care services following a landmark decision in the House of Lords. Gloucester County Council was told it could withdraw services from people in need if it could no longer afford to provide them. Charities working with elderly and disabled people have condemned the judgment. Our disability correspondent Peter White reports. Because of the effects of childhood polio, Dee Weaver has been assessed as needing help in her home with chores like washing and laundry. But her assistance was cut when Gloucestershire ran out of money. She feels she's been badly treated. They've tried very hard now to take the evening meals off me as well to get my two children to cook those. But um, I've protested very strongly and hopefully that they won't. 1,500 clients lost out when Gloucestershire Social Services discovered a £3 million overspend in 1994. Last year, the Court of Appeal ruled they shouldn't have used their financial position as a reason to remove services. This afternoon, Gloucestershire welcomed the fact that the Law Lords, by a majority of three to two, have ruled that resources are relevant in fixing levels of care. This is a landmark judgment but it certainly isn't a victory for anyone. It doesn't find a penny extra for community care. For 30 years, campaigners have been trying to establish the principle that certain levels of care have to be provided, whatever the cost. They're now worried about the consequences of today's judgment. The implications are that local authorities may well take away disabled people's services on the basis that they haven't got resources and say, the law says that we can do so. And so the law on this matter has finally been clarified. What's far less clear is how social services departments are going to be able to afford adequate levels of community care. Disabled people with very similar needs throughout the country could find themselves receiving very different levels of support. Peter White, BBC News, the House of Lords. There's been a slight drop in the rate of inflation. The annual headline figure was 2.7% last month, down 0.1 of 1%. The Chancellor said the government's steadily getting to its inflation target. Changing times mean changes in the basket of products used to calculate the average price index. This year, pale ale is out and alco pops are in. But it was cheaper fresh vegetables like carrots and leeks, which were the main reason for the fall in inflation last month. Underlying inflation, having been stuck just below 3% for two years, at the end of last year rose sharply to 3.3%. It was described as an aberration and the rate has since fallen back. But it's still above the target of 2.5% which the government had promised to hit before the election. They promised to hit their inflation target by the end of this parliament. We're there now but they failed to meet their target and more than that Britain's record of inflation is one of the worst in Europe. The reality is that the Chancellor of the Exchequer faced with a 25% deficit in the polls, is incapable of taking the decisions necessary to meet his own inflation target, and that's why we're in this difficulty. The Prime Minister, making his regular morning photo call today at a hospital in central London, has hailed stable prices as a key part of what he called the turbo economy. The Chancellor made very clear in the budget that his target was 2.5% during the course of this year. We're certainly going to be able to achieve that over the next few months. That's a tremendous achievement for Britain. It's certainly not a failure. The dispute at Peugeot in Coventry, however, may warn of more pressure on prices to come. Unions today postponed a planned strike to vote on...